and welcome to the Excel to Google Earth mapping tool tutorial. This tutorial is going to help you figure out how to format your data and bring it into Excel and how to use the Excel to Google Earth mapping tool to create a map. We recommend that you open your software on your computer and follow along with the tutorial, pausing it to mimic the actions on your own computer that we have demonstrated here. If you have any questions, please contact us at e2ghelp at unc.edu. Now the first thing you need to do is make sure that your data is in Microsoft Excel, either version 2003 or 2007, and once you have installed your macro, open the file that contains the data that you want to map. You should see something like this. There is a worksheet called ETH Admin 2 Data, which is open, and you should see your Measure Evaluation Excel to Google Earth Tool Macro button near the top. This file has two columns, column A and column B. Column A is entitled Admin 2, as you see in cell A1. Column B, as labeled in cell B1, is called Percent A98. And when you launch the macro by clicking on the custom toolbar button that says Measure Evaluation Excel to Google Earth, you'll see a dialog box. The main dialog box lists out all of the steps involved in um, getting your data ready to map and launching Google Earth and displaying your map. Um, it lists out all the steps here. I don't. I won't read through them. You can do that on your own. And there's a little box at the bottom that if you check it, it will hide this message the next time you start it up. Um, there's no reason you need to do that unless you just want to shorten the procedure. So if you click on the continue button, um, you will start with step one. And it asks you to select a country to map. Um, in this case, we're mapping data from Ethiopia. So click on Ethiopia and then click the Continue button. Step 2 asks you to select a worksheet to map. In this case, our worksheet is called ETH Admin 2 Data. So we'll select that and click Continue. Then we select a field that has the geographic boundary names in step three. Um, remember this is the name that is typed in cell A1 and it needs to either be admin1 or admin2. Select that and then click continue. Step four asks you to select an alternate boundary label or click skip. If your spreadsheet had an extra column, say a column C or column D, and it contained more information about your uh, geographic boundaries, such as a special code, a unique identifying code for each boundary, um, you could select that column and have it display along with the boundary names on your final map. Uh, we do not have one of those in this spreadsheet, so I'm going to click Skip. In Step 5, we're going to select our variable to be mapped, this is the percent %A98 item. So click on this and then click Continue. Step 6 asks you to enter a variable description. Um, and you need to select all of the text in this box and replace it as it tells you to do right there. You can replace it with any description you want to use for your variable and you can format it using XHTML. So we're going to select the data and type in a name. And step seven um, asks you to select the type of classes. We have two choices here, uh, quantiles or equal intervals and the quantile classification method will distribute your values into groups that each contain an equal number of values or approximately equal. Um, the equal interval classification method will divide your attribute values into groups that contain an equal range of values. 
Um, so if you have more continuous data, the equal interval method will work well. If your data is highly variable, you will want to choose the quantile classification. And you can read more about that in the text boxes included here. We're going to choose quantiles and then click continue to go to step 8. Step 8 is where you can select the number of classes that you want your data to be divided into. We're going to choose 4 here. Uh, it's important that if you only have a few administrative units, uh, then you will want a smaller number of classes. If you have a larger number of units and a wider range of data, you can select a higher number of classes. We're going to choose 4 and then click Continue.